Hi, I'm Derek Muller, the creator of Veritasium, here with UNSW TV at the Powerhouse Museum. Tonight is a very special event. It's called Space Oddity, and it's a night with a former commander of the International Space Station, Chris Hatfield. I'm here with the former commander of the International Space Station, astronaut Chris Hatfield. Thank you so much for joining me. Now, I have some questions from UNSW TV and fans of Science Alert. Trevor Kemp asks, what was your greatest physical or academic obstacle that you had to overcome in order to become an astronaut? It's maybe a surprise, but the hardest thing is remembering everything. I served as an astronaut for 21 years, and people taught me things for 21 years that, that you needed to know. And when you're uh, on board a space station, you need to think back, what did that guy tell me eight and a half years ago of how to use this little piece of equipment? Because now I need to know, and they're not here to ask. It was an enormous memory task. and so. Finding a way to keep all that stuff in the front of my head, that was the hardest thing of it all. There are a million things that can go wrong. You've been studying for years and years and years. And, and uh, there's an astronaut saying that is, there is no problem so bad that you can't make it worse. <laughs> Nicholas Hillier asks, what did you dream? Or how was sleeping different in space? Uh, Nicholas, sleep on board the space station uh, is physically different because you're floating weightless the whole time. Your, your arms are, are just floating in front of you and, and you don't need a pillow and you don't need a mattress and, and uh, it's as if you're just suspended and tumbling through the universe. So it's, it's an immensely react, uh, relaxing, it's lovely. Um, and as for dreams, I, I don't think much about dreams. To me, what was really interesting is what was happening while I was awake and that was really the stuff of dreams. So we go around the world every 92 minutes. And, and, so, and the world turns underneath you as you're going. So it's, it's as if someone's pouring this huge kaleidoscope of the world constantly underneath you. Ruth Parksey asks, how did your body react to gravity when you returned to Earth? When you get back to Earth, your body has become adapted to living on the space station. It's used to weightlessness and to be subjected to the oppression of gravity again, where it's pushing the blood to your feet and spinning your balance system, or at least confusing your balance system and forcing your muscles to fight it all the time, having to hold your head up for the first time in five months. It's kind of brutal. It's, it's as if you're... Um, uh, you're recovering from a long illness, or you've just been through a car crash and your whole body's all shaken up. And it takes quite a while. It took days and days before I started to feel normal. It took about four months before I could run properly again, and I'm still growing my skeleton back. It's a long process. This is what the soft landing rockets look like. Sue Salinas asks, what experiment would you like to see performed in space, or which experiment is the most important happening right now? Uh, the space station has about 200 experiments running on it. And uh, for Sue, I think that the most interesting one is we're collecting what the universe is made of. We don't know what the universe is made of. We can't account for 94% of the universe. We call it dark matter and dark energy. We're trying to figure it out. It's really important if we want to have better engines, if we want to travel further in space, we at least need to know what the universe is made of. There's a huge experiment in the top of the space station called the Alpha Magnetic Spectrometer that is collecting the subatomic particles of the universe to try and figure that out. There's a lot of cool experiments looking at the world, studying the body, studying physics, studying flame. So that's a candle on Earth on the left. The candle on the right is a candle on the space station. Colin Clunas asks, what message do you want to bring back for the next generation here on Earth? The most important message for me is for people to see opportunities that exist. It's really easy to get sort of locked up in your own little subset of the world and not realize all the amazing stuff that's happening right now, the discoveries that are going on, the ability to communicate it through the internet, the awareness of the universe around us, the, uh, the possibility to increase standard of living of people all across the world. Those can only come through awareness, through study, through learning, through seeing all those things that are happening. 
uh, my biggest message is don't let yourself get locked up in a small world with limited horizons. It's amazing the opportunities that exist and the ability to access it that we have right now. Well, thank you very much for chatting with us. Thanks. Nice to meet you all.